Okay, this is the last of a series of three demonstrations for the biological record tools from the Tom Bio Productivity Tools Suite. In the um, first couple, we looked at how to make records from CSV files, either for the whole CSV file or for individual species within CSV files containing biological records. In di this demonstration, we're going to take that a step further and show you how to generate um, species maps in bulk very, very quickly. So first, I'm just opening the um, CSV file for spiders and harvestmen in Shropshire, selecting the grid reference and the taxon co column, which is taxon, saying that it's got scientific names and picking another group in column, which in this case is order, so that I can go to the taxa tab and make the tree. So I can see all of the uh, apilionis or harvestmen records here. And normally, or as you've seen so far, if I select all of those harvestman records and generate a map for them, I get them all, all the species within one map there. And if I want to do them individually, then I have to select them individually and click this button each time. But in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to um, batch that so that we um, can automatically create a separate map for each species. And we do that by going to the Options tab here. And if I select, select from the drop down list here batch map mode instead of the default single map mode and then click the generate button you'll see that up here we're getting a separate map for each of the species of harvestman. So it really is very very quick indeed to do that and of course we can use that with atlas type squares as well as um, uh, points as we did then. So for example if I select the monads or one kilometer squares and generate the maps again we get atlas maps for each of the species at the required level. Now when we're doing atlas maps we're generally doing them for either an online atlas or a paper publication and uh, we need to do a lot of maps very, very quickly and get them out of the GIS or whatever program we're using into a form that we can use, so as an image file in other words. So I'm going to show you how to do that with another option. Let's just zoom into Shropshire a bit, clear the map layers there. And we do that by selecting this option here from the Options tab, Generate Atlas Images. And when we do that, images of each map as they're generated will be put into the file specified here. We can change that file with this Browse Image Folder button here. In this case, it's pointing to a, a folder, an empty folder, which I'll show you using Windows Explorer. So it's pointing to this folder here. So you can see there's nothing in it at the moment. But if I click the button now, it generates the map in the GIS as usual, the individual maps. You can see them up here. But at the same time, if we look at the file, the folder with Windows Explorer, we can see that we've also got images in there now. So if we look at those, we've got a different Monad Atlas map for each species. Now you'll notice, as I'm scrolling through those, that they've got different colours for each species. And that's, as you've seen before, the default behaviour of QGIS. It creates a different uh, on-the-fly colour for each new map it creates like that. So we need to get around that because for atlases we generally want a standard colour. So if we look at the style sheet for the Platybanus triangularis map here, supposing we want all of the maps to have this nice red colour here, well there's a convenient method of doing that in QGIS because we can save and load um, styles to files. So I'll save this style now to a QGIS layer style file. And we'll put it in here, we'll call it uh, pink style. Now because that's saved, I can load that into any other map. So, for example, this Phalangium apilio map, which is a different colour. If I open the style sheet on that and load the style, you see it goes to the, the colour we had before. Do it once more for another one. Load style. 
Okay, so we can also make use of that feature using the batch tool. So I can say apply a style and select the style file here and just regenerate the maps again. So let's delete the ones we've got, regenerate them again, and now you can see they're all being generated in that same pink style. And if we look at the folder, the image folder with Windows Explorer, and look again, preview the map, you can see now they're much more standard. Okay, so we're getting to where we want to be in terms of generating Atlas maps. Now, of course, with Atlas maps, we generally want um, a more interesting background, something to orientate ourselves. So, for example, we might have the hectare squares showing. So I'm just going to enrich this back, background map now in QGIS just to show you what we can do, really. So I'm putting a nice OS backdrop on, which is totally free data now from OS, this particular layer. I'm masking out some of the background. Let's resume that. And now let's make some um, a different size map. So let's go to something unusual. Let's do five kilometer squares, quadrants these. You don't see these very often. But we can do these things so quickly with this tool that it's worth experimenting with these different resolutions. Now I'm going to do circles this time. So we've selected the pink style. Let's create the quadrant maps. Look in our folder. And now you can see, as well as the one kilometer ones which are still in there, we've got these five kilometer quadrant maps. Let's have a look at one. There we go. That's the monad. There's the quadrant. So we can generate these exceedingly quickly. Now, let's just delete those ones. Sometimes you don't want the layers to appear in the layer control. So, for example, if I were generating maps for, say, spiders, I've got about 400 different species of spiders in there. I wouldn't want all the maps appearing up here. So I can check this box, which says remove map layers in batch mode. That means as the layer is created and the image created, it's then removed from the map list here. So if I kick that off now, it's starting to do them, as you can see. Now there's about 400 species here, so I'm going to interrupt this. You can see there's no maps in the layer there, but in the folder, the image folder, using Windows Explorer, we can see the maps are being created for the spiders up here. Just so we can see what's going on, I'm going to delete all of those maps now. Okay, for the final demonstration, I'm going to create some two kilometer, i.e. some tetrad maps. I'm going to keep the maps in the layer control for the moment. I'm going to do it for the harvestman again. Let's create them. You can see they're coming out as the pink ones here. So let's put one of them on. But supposing um, I want a more sophisticated style here, there are ways of changing the color depending on the value of an attribute. You saw this in the first demonstration in this series. And I've created a style for that. So I'm going to load that style for this map here. So you can see it. It's this style here. So the color of the dot depends on the number of records in that tetrad now. OK, so it's coloring them up. Now I can use that obviously in the batch mode as well. And that's what I want to show you. So I'm going to change this style here to this one. Clear all these maps, generate them again. Let's go and have a look in the image folder. And there we've got them. So the dots, depending on the number of records in each one. So you can see how really, really quick it is to generate these maps. Uh, we can generate 400 spider maps using this tool in less than four minutes. So I could do them all. I could decide, oh, I want to tweak the backdrop a bit. I could do that and then run them all again. And within five minutes, I've got a completely new set of maps. 
Someone could send me some new records. I update my spreadsheet. I run the whole lot again in less than five minutes. I've got a completely new set of maps. And that's the great advantage of using this tool for 